Welcome to the second part of the esophagus anatomy. Welcome to a brand new class on DNMD, where you can learn everything related about the basic sciences of medical knowledge and apply it to patient care in the future or right now. The abdominal esophagus is the shortest, measuring only 1 to 2.5 centimeters. The esophagus reaches the abdomen by going through the diaphragm at the level of the T11 vertebra. The hole in the diaphragm through which the esophagus passes is known as the esophageal hiatus, and it is created by the diaphragmatic cross, the right cross, and the left cross. These are structures that the diaphragm uses to attach itself to the vertebral column. When the esophagus enters the abdomen, it is located behind the left lobe of the liver and then joins with the stomach, at a union known as the gastroesophageal union, also known as the cardias or cardiac orifice. However, this is only the anatomical union, and it can be different from the histological one. What I mean by histological union is the part where the epithelium from the esophagus changes into the gastric epithelium. This is known as the C line and can often be located above the gastroesophageal junction. Also, a fat pad may be visible beneath the visceral peritoneum covering the anterior surface of the gastroesophageal junction. This can be a useful landmark in surgery to identify this junction. The esophagus is tightly attached to the esophageal hiatus via two ligaments in each side known as the phrenoesophageal ligaments. These ligaments are made up by an ascending limb formed by the supradiaphragmatic endothoracic fascia and also by a descending limb made up from the infradiaphragmatic transversalis fascia. So in a certain way you can think of the diaphragm like a hamburger. The diaphragm will be the meat, the lettuce on top will be the supradiaphragmatic endothoracic fascia, the tomato beneath will be the infradiaphragmatic transversalis fascia, the bread on top will be the parietal pleura, and the breath on the bottom will be the parietal peritoneum. As the age of a person increases, this ligament becomes weaker, which means that the esophagus can move freely through the esophageal hiatus. The abdominal esophagus is an intraperitoneal organ, which means that it is suspended by a mesentery. This short mesentery is often called the gastrophrenic ligament. It goes from the posterior surface of the esophagus to the posterior surface of the gastric fundus and contains the vessels for the abdominal esophagus. And the final structure located in the abdominal esophagus is the lower esophageal sphincter. It has a high basal tone of 15 to 20 millimeters of mercury and is made up of circular smooth muscle. Together with the upper esophageal sphincter, they relax to allow the passage of food and also to allow vomiting. The lower esophageal sphincter starts even in the esophagus that is crossing through the esophageal hiatus and extends into the abdominal esophagus. Some muscle fibers even extend to the lesser curvature, the greater curvature and the gastric fundus. This sphincter together with the right cross of the diaphragm prevent the reflux of gastric content into the esophagus known as gastroesophageal reflux. When intra-abdominal pressure increases, the right cross of the diaphragm contracts and constricts the abdominal esophagus, preventing reflux. The cervical esophagus receives blood thanks to the inferior thyroid artery. This artery is a branch of the thyrocervical trunk, which arises from the subclavian artery. The arteries for the thoracic esophagus are the bronchial arteries, which also go to the lung, and the esophageal branches that originate directly from the thoracic aorta. On the other hand, the abdominal esophagus is irrigated by branches of the left phrenic artery as well as by esophageal branches of the left gastric artery. The cervical esophagus venous drainage is in charge of the inferior thyroid vein. While the thoracic esophagus has acicus system, the hemiacicus system, as well as some bronchial veins. The acicus system is a huge network of veins located in the right thoracic cage, while the hemiacicus and accessory hemiacicus systems are another network of veins but located on the left side of the thoracic cage. 
the abdominal esophagus drains to the left gastric vein, but the left gastric vein is a branch of the portal system. The portal system with the portal vein is in a specific type of system for the gastrointestinal tract that is separate from the systemic venous drainage. The esophageal branches of the left gastric vein fuse with the esophageal branches of the thoracic esophagus, therefore joining the portal system with branches that will drain to the superior vena cave. The union of two different vessels is known as anastomosis, and in this case is known as a portocaval anastomosis, meaning a union of the portal system, in this case thanks to the left gastric vein, with the vena cava system, in this case thanks to branches that will drain into the acigo system and in turn will drain into the superior vena cava. The cervical esophagus lymphatic drainage goes to the paratracheal lymph nodes, meaning the lymph nodes that are located on either side of the trachea. The thoracic esophagus lymphatic drainage goes to the posterior mediastinal lymph nodes. And finally, the drainage from the abdominal esophagus goes into the left gastric lymph nodes, which in turn drain into the paracardial lymph nodes, which are the lymph nodes located on either side of the cardias. And these lymph nodes finally drain into the celiac lymph nodes that are the ones located along the celiac trunk. In order for the esophagus to do its job, it needs to receive orders from the nerves. The superior one-third of the esophagus is made up of a skeletal voluntary muscle, mainly by the cricopharyngeus muscle. Therefore, it's innervated by somatic motoneurons. In this case, they originate from the nucleus ambiguous, also known as the swallowing center, located in the brainstem, and they arrive to the cervical esophagus, transported by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. The lower two-thirds of the esophagus, being a smooth muscle, it's innervated by visceral motor neurons, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous systems. The sympathetic nervous systems for the esophagus originate from the superior thoracic segments of the spinal cord, while the parasympathetic nervous system for the esophagus originate from the vagus nerve, specifically from the dorsal vagal nucleus, which is also located in the brainstem. Them. Pain from the esophagus is transported via visceral nerves that travel along the sympathetic fibers. These nerves arrive to the spinal cord at the segments T1, T2, T3 and T4. These segments of the spinal cord are also the ones that receive pain signals from the heart. Therefore, it is often difficult to distinguish esophageal pain from cardiac pain. And that's it for today's video. In the next video, we'll talk about some clinical applications about the knowledge acquired in this video. I think it's better this way so the videos are shorter. If you would like to read more about the topics discussed in this video, I'll put my reference down below in the description. Also, if you have any questions, please don't doubt to write it in the comment section. Before you do, make sure that your question wasn't asked already. If it has, please give that question a like and the three questions with the most likes will be answered in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching. And remember, it's always for our patients. If you like this video and the content I make, please don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video. With your help, I'm sure we can get free medical content to every corner of this world.